New Yorkers in a recent poll say crime is the top issue heading into the, heading into the midterms. But check out this out. What's the reality? In New York and cities across the country, murder rates this year are actually falling, even in places like Chicago, Philadelphia, San Francisco. So what crime is up and what crime is not up? And is this about playing with the reality? Former NYPD Commissioner Ray Kelly joins us right now. He's now CEO of Guardian Group. It's great to have you, Commissioner. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Good to be with you, Chris. Looking good as always. So uh, let's talk about the facts. I got some graphs up here of a seven city composite. Um, the homicide rate is down, but other key crime indicators, robbery, assault, car theft, uh, are up. What does that tell you about what the reality is? <clears throat> well, I think it does show the, uh, the reality. Here in New York City, and this is a good thing, of course, murders are down, shootings are down. But every other crime, every other felony category, and what we call the index crimes, are up and up significantly. Robbery up about 40 percent. The grand larceny, grand larceny auto up 40 percent. In New York, all the numbers are big. So when we're talking about a percentage increase like that, that's a significant uh, number. Uh, we've well, let's had, give us uh, some perspective 20... on it because, you know, you, you know this stuff so well. But to, to, the reg you know, the, to the rest of us, wait, so murder's coming down, but all these other crimes are up so much? How do those two things go together? We're not certain why murder is down. This is actually a phenomenon from, from this year. It is uh, still above what it was in 2019 the last full year uh, before the, uh, the pandemic. But it, there are other aspects to this. Obviously, the, the transit situation is critical in, in New York. People are not riding the subway. We've had 25 people pushed onto the tracks in New York City this year. We've had nine murders in the transit system. And ridership is basically half of what it was before the, uh, the pandemic. So, yeah, these numbers are significant and yes at the same time it's good that murders and shootings are are down or certainly going in the right direction so we're not sure why they're going down why do you think the other ones are going up well I I think uh, you, you know to get the whole picture you kind of have to go back to the death of George Floyd uh, there was a sea change in law enforcement uh, after that there was a what I would say is an overreaction to that and it brought about a lot of restrictions a lot of laws rules regulations uh that look to restrict the police the police see themselves now as being in, at risk they're not doing any proactive policing as i would call it they're doing reactive policing so we don't see that we don't see them searching out crimes they're concerned about their career they're concerned about the well-being of of their family so i think that is a very critical part. Now, there are other aspects to this. I think, you know, George Soros and his very clever plot to install district attorneys that uh, think like like he does. Here in New York, we have a bail law controversy. New York is the only state that doesn't allow judges to make a determination of dangerousness on people who appear before them. That's why you get this revolving door situation in in New York, people are arrested day after day after day. Basically, judges cannot look at their previous record. So, and, and as I said, I, I think the the most important aspect to this is the sort of the demonization of, of police. They're not doing what they did a few years ago because, quite frankly, they don't see it in their interest to uh, to do it. So the what's other the thing fix? that I, well, I, the other thing I, I've been preaching. We have to put back the anti-crime unit, civilian closed units. People are afraid of being robbed, of being mugged. The crimes that I mentioned, robbery, grand larceny, they're mugging crimes. We need those plainclothes police officers. The perpetrators are not looking over their shoulder because they know they don't have to look over their shoulder. They know the police are not out there looking for them. I also think that top question at first is a legitimate tool that should be in every police officer's toolbox. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com, newsnationnow.com, and you can find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.